Hi friends. Today we have a lesson all about pattern and how pattern is used to camouflage something. Camouflage is a way to hide something by helping it to blend into its surroundings or its background. In nature, animals and insects use their natural markings or their color to help them blend into their surroundings and protect them from predators. Now, when we think about camouflage using patterns, patterns can kind of mean two different things. We can think more about patterns that artists and designers use. That's something like um, circle square, circle square, circle square, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, things like that, things that repeat. Pattern in nature is a little bit more free form. We can think of it as like stripes on a tiger or maybe the markings on a butterfly. And I actually have an example of the two different types of pattern that we're gonna be talking about today. And I'm gonna show you, it's actually on my couch. So friends, welcome to my couch. <laughs> you can see my couch fabric is a pattern. You can see there's circles inside squares and the colors repeat. There's a lot going on here but it does all repeat, it's a pattern. And now this is a different kind of pattern. This is a blanket I keep on my couch. And this is like a leopard print, I believe, or cheetah print, I'm not sure. You all probably know, let me know. You can see this is a pattern that repeats. This is black spots on a lighter brown background, but it's not quite as consistent, right? It's a little bit more organic different size spots, and it's hard to really determine what a predictable pattern is here. See the difference? Cool. So what we're going to do for our project today is attempt to recreate a pattern that you can find in your house. It can be a really predictable pattern like this one on my couch or something a little bit more organic, like an animal print. But look for a pattern in your house Get a piece of paper and either some markers or some crayons and we're going to try to fill up an entire piece of paper with that pattern and then see if we can cut a butterfly shape out of it and see if we can hide or camouflage our butterfly in our house okay i'm going to use my couch pattern i've got all of my materials set up at my art table so we're going to head over there and get started see you in a second Here we go. I've got the pattern that I'm going to be recreating from a pillow from my couch. And I've got some markers here and I'll have to pull out all the right colors that I need. More markers right here. And I'm going to do my best to recreate this pattern. Now I know that your pattern won't be the same as mine, but I wanna give you some tips on how to get started. So one thing I can do, if I have something that I can set a piece of paper on, I can do that and I wanna start with a pencil because I wanna make sure I don't mark on any fabric that won't wash off, so be careful about that. And this has got, you can see, the squares. So I can line up my paper and I'm just gonna start to mark how big the squares are on the paper and it looks like it'll go off a little bit but that's okay we'll make it work and then i'm gonna go this way and mark the same place just to kind of make it easier to have a place to begin okay so i'm always gonna keep Keep my pattern nearby so I can keep referencing it. And now I can take a ruler and I'm going to draw straight lines where my marks are. Start to build my squares. And I won't do the whole thing, I'll just give you an idea of what my plan is and then I'll show you when I'm all done what I came up with. So I've gone this way, now I'm just gonna do a few going the other way to make the squares the right size.
And we just want to make sure, you, I want you to fill up your whole piece of paper because we need to use this paper to cut our butterfly out of and we need a nice big butterfly. So we're going to do this and then I will show you, I'll come back. So I have this all filled in and I'll show you some tips on how to cut out your butterfly, okay? Get real close here, make sure everyone can see. Great. So I'm just gonna start, I've got my squares here. And then inside of each square, I need a circle, but some of the circles are bigger than others. And it doesn't really matter where I start on my pattern, if it's just repeating over and over. I can start anywhere, I just wanna keep track of where I'm going to start. So I'm gonna use my eyes, and I can turn my pattern a little bit, if it makes it easier for me to follow it. And I'm gonna start with a smaller circle, and then a bigger circle. If I have a stencil for a shape that I need, I can use that, but I'm just gonna do my best. Just gonna use my eyes, okay. And now, since it's every other one, this would be a bigger circle in this one, and then a smaller circle, a bigger circle. I start to make sense. I'm just following what the pattern is. A smaller circle, bigger circle. Okay. From there, can start to draw in details. Let's start right there. I'm going to start with this right here. You can see how there's smaller circle, bigger circle, smaller circle, bigger circle, bigger circle, smaller circle. See how that repeats? It changes. So I can start to draw in. Let's see, this has got a circle on the inside of it. And this has got these lines. I can make those more distinct when I color them. This has got the same thing. Can you see that? I'm sorry, that was kind of a glare. It's probably hard to see. And now this is just a plain circle. So the color, and then I'm back on this kind of circle. So I would just want to keep going to fill in my whole piece of paper to make my pattern. And, oh, that's not how that goes. Your creative challenge, I'll stop paying attention for a moment. Your creative challenge is to fill in the whole piece of paper, okay? I'm just gonna keep going, drawing my big circles and little circles. And it's okay if I don't do it perfectly right now because I'm using my pencil just to get all the shapes in place. I'll just do my best. Smaller circle. Bigger circles. Kind of not the same size. It goes off the edge a little bit. I could always trim that off too, since that's kind of extra right there. But so from here, I would want to draw out everything else. But I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring in. And I might not have the exact same colors, you know, that are in my pattern, but that's okay. I'm just gonna do my best. I'm gonna start with this going around here. So that gray. Okay. Oh. Pattern even changes. This is a tricky pattern. I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing on this pattern, friends. It's kind of confusing. And this is gonna go here. Okay, I'm just gonna try to get this one row colored in for you. Let's see what we think. We'll see what we think. Okay. So this is Then I can see that some of these got like a little bit of a orangey and then a lighter 
orangey color. Let's see what I have. Maybe not the exact same orange, but that's okay. Next one after that is that lighter orange. And it probably looks brown to you, but I'm like right here, here, going down the row like this, okay? So I could make it brown. This is just how my eye sees it. I'm just gonna do my best, get my pattern drawn in. Awesome. One, two, let's see. Need to take a black. And some of these. Actually, these lines go the other way. In the way I'm doing this. That's okay. That's why I like to start off in pencil. Yeah? I've got these little lines and you might find an easier pattern to replicate. That would be a good idea. Plaid is really good. Plaid, a lot of our furniture is plaid and that's really nice um, design to use because plaid is line and color. So that's that'll make a really, really good pattern to follow if you can find one of those. Just go around these and make this shape a little more pronounced. Okay. Then behind this, go ahead and fill in these lines. Black. And I'm going to color in the background so it really, really pops. And the background is mostly gray, oh, but not on all of them. One of these is the background is white. So again, I got to really watch that. This, this is a hard pattern. So I'm just looking for things like color. What colors are they using? kind of designs are they using in the pattern to think about if you were designing an animal that could be camouflaged into your couch <laughs> how would you draw the pattern for its skin yeah these backgrounds One of those circles has a white background instead of a gray background. That looks like all of the orange circles have this gray background. So I'm on my way making my pattern that looks like this pattern. Doing my best. I'm going to keep going and see if I can fill in this whole sheet with my pattern. Once I'm done with that, we will come back and we will cut our butterfly out of our sheet and see if we have successfully camouflaged our butterfly with pattern, okay? I'll see you in a bit. Keep working. I have got my pattern sheet all filled out. I did my best to match the colors and the pattern from my pillow, and from my couch. And now what I need to do is cut out my butterfly shape to put it on my couch and to see how well my camouflage pattern does. So what I'm gonna do is since a butterfly is uh, symmetrical, that means it's the same on both sides, if I divide it down the middle, I'm going to fold my paper in half, just like this, and hold it like this, and then I think we decided this is a hamburger fold. Just bring my ends together, give it a crease. Now I only have to draw half of a butterfly and cut out half of a butterfly if I do it on this folded line. 
right there. So this is gonna be the center line right here. And so I'm gonna use a marker so you can see. And when I think of a butterfly, first I'm going to just draw loosely what a butterfly looks like. I'm gonna to try to draw a butterfly that looks like this. I can practice that. So butterflies, or you can do a moth, however your wings end up. Butterflies are moths, they usually kind of have a double wing. And so this one, I just did two kind of big ovals, two big loops, and then I've got the body right here, but I only need to draw that half of it. So I'm gonna take this, this is the inside part of my butterfly, will be on this middle folded line right there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Start by just drawing the body, I'll do the top and the bottom. Let's put another little mark down for each one of those. And now I can have one wing go out, just draw a big oval like that. And then I can turn my paper around and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, just like that. And now I just need to locate my scissors, friends. Sorry about that, Miss Morgan was having an art adventure somewhere else. <laughs> so now this is my folded line, and I'm just going to keep my paper folded and cut out on that line that I've drawn. So I'm cutting two layers of paper at once. Uh, if it's just kind of plain copy paper, thin construction paper, you'll be okay. I think you can do it. This way it's much easier to cut out your butterfly shape all at once. Instead of trying to cut two sides out to look the same, I'm just gonna cut them both at the same time and that way they will be the same. And this little side off. Okay. And now I can open it up. Check out my butterfly shape. What do you think? Now, Lay it on here. See if I can match up the pattern. Let's go put it on my couch so we can see it a little bit bigger. And we'll see how I did. Okay, friends. Moment of truth. Let's see if I can line this up with the right colors. It's kind of hard. It's hard to figure out. Okay, so I can see some places where I was a little off with what colors I put where, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, friends, I can't wait to see what you did and what you accomplished and what you learned about pattern and camouflage in this project. And remember, you can send me your pictures of your final projects to artscounciloKC at gmail.com and tell me your name and tell me how old you are. All right, friends, I hope you had fun with this project. I sure did, and I will see you next time, okay? Bye-bye.